Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I will be teaching you about the C-frame functions to world space and to object space. And at first glance, these may sound very intimidating and complex, but in reality, they're pretty simple. I will go over what object space and world space is in Roblox, and I'll give you some real world examples of what you can do. And one of the key things that you can do with it are like rotate parts, you can position other parts in front, like in the front of a part no matter where you're looking or where you are. Some really cool stuff like that that may seem complex and intimidating, but in the end it's actually pretty easy, but very, very useful. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and without further ado, let's get started. So before we can talk about these two functions, to object space and to world space, we first have to go over what world space and object space is. So world space is pretty self-explanatory. Let me draw it out. And I'm going to be doing this in 2D since it's a little bit simpler. In Roblox, this will obviously be 3D. So world space is just like this coordinate plane. It, and the origin is 0, 0, 0. So let me just write this out origin is 0, 0. This is in 2D. So this is what world space is. There we go. Origin is 0, 0. And so if you have like a point, let's say we have this point like right here. Let me just select this layer. Point right here. This would be, I don't know, like negative 3 on the x and 0 on the y because this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So this is some basic math stuff. But let's say I have a point like over here and let's say this point is 3 on the x and negative 3 on the y. And we want to have a point 1 like unit to the right of this no matter where the point is. In this situation, we would have to use object space. So object space just basically takes whatever point you have, or whatever orientation you have, because in Roblox you use this with C-frames, and it makes that the origin. So this, theoretically, would be the origin. If you're like working in object space, it'd be 0, 0. So if you want to position a point relative to this point in object space, you can do that quite easily no matter where the point is. So let's say I want to convert a point 1, 0 into object space like relative to this point. So 1, 0 is 1 on the x, 0 on the y. So I go 1 on the x, 0 on the y, and this would be my new point. And if 1, 0 in world space would just be like right here. And so let's say I have a point right here. doesn't really matter where it is. Let's say I want to go 1, 0 to object space right here, it'd be like over here. So object space is basically just positioning points and in Roblox C frames relative to another point. So now that we have this out of the way, let's go into Roblox Studio and actually use the functions. So I'm here in Roblox Studio and now we can actually use two world space and two object space and some real life applications. And so this function is always run on a C-frame. But for the sake of this video and for the sake of visual re representation, we're going to use this part to represent our C-frame since all parts in Roblox have a C-frame, which is their position and their orientation. So I'm going to go create a part, a script, I should say, inside of my part. And we're going to define our part, which will be script, whoops, script.parent. And we're going to make a quick little function. And this is going to create a part just for visual representation of our C-frames. So we're gonna define local new part equals instance.new part, and then new part.parent will equal workspace, new part.anchored equals true, new part.size equals vector3.new, one, 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 just make it a little small cube. And we can return new part. There we go, it's vector3, not vector3. Two. Whoops. Okay, so here we go. Now, let's make a new C frame and convert it from world space, object space, to world space. So we're going to start with to world space as our first function, 
and this function takes in a C frame and it turns it into world space from object space. So we're going to define a C frame, and this C frame is going to be equal to C frame dot new zero zero one. So in world space, this would just be like one on the z-axis. But if we use our part C frame like so, so local new C frame, and this will be equal to part dot C frame colon to world space and then we give it the CF so this basically says we take the C frame we convert it from this basic default world space and we move it relative to our part C frame so if we were to create a part local part equals create part part dot C frame equals new C frame if we were to run this you can see that this part is right here, which is the very front of the part. And just to show you the difference, if we were to put this into objects or world space, I should say, and we change it to CF, you can see that it's all the way down here. It's not relative to this part. And so this allows you to get some really cool behavior. Like, let me change it to new C frame. Like, for example, no matter where I move this part, no matter how I rotate it, so let me just like rotate it like here and here and whatever. The part will always be facing the front of this part and it'll like always be in this orientation, which is really, really cool. So no matter where I move it in the map, like if I move it this way, move it up, it'll always be at the front face of our part. And this is only one coordinate. You can change this C frame to whatever you want. And so another useful thing with two world space is if we give it an angle. So let's just change our CF to C frame dot angles zero math dot rad oh, whoops ninety and then zero. Let me move this. So this is a C frame with the Y axis rotated by ninety degrees. So since C frame dot angles takes in a radian value, we have to do math dot radians to convert our degree value to radian values. Just ignore that if you don't understand it. But if we were to run this, this would rotate our part by like 90 degrees. You can't really see that. So a better example of this, if we set our part dot C frame, so let's just say part dot C frame equals new C frame. So this will rotate our part by 90 degrees. Let's see what happened. I spelled C frame wrong. Whoops. Let's actually comment this out real quick because we don't want to create this new part. We're going to set part dot C frame to new C frame. And you can see it rotated by 90 degrees. And the cool thing about this is since it's in object space, we can do this as many times as we want. And we won't have to like reset the orientation like once it reaches 180 it'll always rotate 90 degrees each time which is really really cool and another thing to note about two world space is this thing right here is the exact same as saying new c frame equals part dot c frame times cf so these two statements are exactly the same so I like using two world space personally because it's more apparent what it's doing. Multiplying it is what a lot of people do because that's how it like was before they added these functions. But if you ever see a C frame multiplied by another C frame, it's the equivalent of calling this function. Just keep that in mind. And so two object space is the exact opposite of two world space. So let me just comment these out. Personally, I rarely use two object space just for the sole fact that like Most of the time you don't really need to use it But what you can do is let's say I define a C frame local CF equals C frame dot new Zero Ten zero whatever and this is in world space if I want to get this in object space relative to let's say this part I can do print part dot C frame to object space and send in my CF. And you can see instead of printing the 0, 10, 0, it'll print another number. In this case, it's just 3, 5, negative 10. Don't worry about the rest of these values, that's just all the matrix data for our C frame. 
But the main use of this is when you're converting your mouse coordinates, because mouse coordinates and Roblox are always in world space, when you convert those into object space, like according to a part in case you want to like split the part in half, for example. I use that in my bread slicing video, or if you want to place a part on top of another part relatively, I might have a video about that coming soon. But yeah, that's basically it for to object space. And that's about it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. It was kind of short, but these are really nice functions. I was actually recommended by one of my subscribers to create this video. So I hope you learned a little bit about C-frames. I should have more C-frames video videos coming soon because C-frames are pretty complex and a lot of people don't know about them, but they're very, very powerful once you get to know them. I use them so much. I use them all the time. They're very, very nice and they are so much better than using orientation and position for my parts. But other than that, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a nice day and goodbye.